almost a year to the day since we were last here. We're both so stoked to be back in Tassie. We only have four days this time, so we're keeping this trip very simple and heading straight to the east coast to pick up some of the places we missed last time we were here. First stop was a dramatic piece of driving about two and a half hours out of Devonport. Straight up the side of Ben Lom, and this has been on our to-do list for ages. The drive to get up Jacob's Ladder is heaps of fun. In fact, despite the scale of it, everything about this place is peaceful. Everything except the Truvy. Place is a ski resort in the winter. What's going on now, though? Should we go to the sea? Yes, please. Right. was just as slow and just as fun as on the way up. With day one already drawing to a bit of a close, we pointed the troopy in the direction of Tassie bucket list spot number two the Bay of Fires. When we were here last summer, as you can imagine, the place was busy. And by busy, I mean packed. This time was very different. This place really is something else. And it's because of places like this that we love Tassie so much. This trip, we were glad to find somewhere to camp at Sloop Reef. Over here, not a bad little sunset. Over here, Super damp, time to go. The plan was generally to just chill and enjoy the place. It was a long drive from Devonport that day and with a bit of luck, I was hoping to be able to catch the sunrise on the Red Rocks first thing in the morning.
annoying. And this frigging seagull. Cruising into day two, we had quite a bit of driving to do that day to get down to Fresno National Park. Luckily, one of us takes a little while longer to wake up than the other one. So one of us got to enjoy these views for a little while longer. Twisted, washed, and packed up. It's time to hit the road and follow the coast all the way down south. It's never easy leaving such a beautiful place behind, but we knew we were going, and we were looking forward to a little bonus detour on the way in. With so many water runoffs and so many creeks to cross, this track wasn't very long, but it was pretty slow going. We were really lucky with this little detour. We hadn't seen a single soul for hours, and with the storm coming in, we just had enough time to look around, grab a bite to eat before it really was time to start thinking about getting back to camp. If the track was slow on the way in, it was even slower on the way out. Second low, all the way, and give your neck a good workout over the bumps. Well, we've made it. Emma is grabbing some camping thing. And that was definitely thunder.
With a gap in the rain, we thought we might be able to catch the sunset over the bay. We were kind of right, and despite having to hold a rain jacket over the camera every now and then, the view was worth it. Day two had drawn to a slightly rainy but very, very pretty end. We'd been to Wineglass Bay before, but we'd never seen it like this. Nor had we done any of the walks or the hikes above and beyond just going up to the lookout. So day three was about that. We were going to head over to Wineglass Beach, go over to the far side and enjoy the view from the ground. So, um, what was the original plan for today? The two and a half hour wine glass bay beach walk. Yeah, right eh? What did we, uh, what did we end up doing? Five and a half hours to Hazard's Beach and back. Oh yeah, well, why's that? Well, I went the wrong way. <laughs> We woke up the next morning to be joined by a few of the locals for breakfast. They didn't hang around for too long, but then again, neither did we. We didn't have much planned that day, but we did have to head back to Devonport to catch the ferry back home. It wasn't long, it wasn't extravagant, but it was everything we love about Tasmania, wrapped up into four days. You could spend months exploring everything that Tassie has to offer, and maybe one day we will. But for now, you won't be surprised to hear that we spent the whole journey home planning our next trip. Cheers Tazzy, catch you again soon. <laughs>